All right, welcome back to Across the Diamond, brought to you by Diamond Prospect Media. I'm Central Florida Area Scout Kennedy Hales, and joining us as always, West Florida Area Scout Jet Rosenstein and our National Scouting Director, Mr. Mike Merritt. How's it going, guys? What's going on? Great. All right, well, let's get right into it. It's playoff season. We're going to start previewing some of the teams that we're looking to see. Go on a little bit of a run inside of it. Uh, Mike, you want to start us off? Sure. Um, let's start right where a team that we've highlighted probably close to a half a dozen times uh, this season already in Stoneman Douglas. Um, 23-2 and two on the season they finished, so pretty good record. Um, these guys also went up to carry North Carolina and won the 2022 NHSI put on by USA Baseball. It was actually the first time, um, I believe in, gosh, I think three, four years now that um, we had two Florida teams in the finals, and we'll talk about another one along the way here that we're going to be previewing. Uh, but Stoneman Douglas, I mean, guys, it, it happens not only on the pitching side, but offensively as well. And some of the names I'm going to bring up are the usual cast of characters, if you will. And the first one we'll go with is Roman Anthony. We know what he been, he's been doing. We know what he brings to the lineup every single time he steps to the plate. It's much watch whatever you're doing stop what you're doing to watch Roman Anthony hit because there's a chance he can do something special and well we've seen him hit some tape measure home runs so he's going to be a big part of their lineup obviously going into it Jake Clemente has been nothing short of spectacular on the mound this season for Stoneman Douglas he's obviously a draft prospect that we've highlighted before runs his fastball up to 95 96 has even touched the seven before and he's also made quite an impact offensively, too. So he's not only getting it done on the mound, but he's getting it done offensively. And he's going to be right there in the you know important part of the lineup where he's going to be called on to, well, if he's getting it done on the mound, get it done offensively, too. Another one who <laughs> we've mentioned him before, too, and a little bit of a two-way potential um, to make an impact here in the playoffs is Christian Rodriguez, the Florida commit. Um, Another one that has run his fastball up to 95. We know that he really can go out there and complement Jay Clemente from a, from a pitching uh, staff perspective really, really well. But towards the end of the season, guys, he's had a couple of homers really to kind of power the offense and some of their late season wins. So, yeah, Christian Rodriguez is known for his prowess on the mound. But, hey, if this lineup is hitting up and down like they can – it's going to be really tough to stop them. Nico Benestad's another one to kind of watch out for, uncommitted, but gets the job done from behind the plate offensively as well. And another one is the young Rylan Lujo, well, which we'll talk about later on, but he's another one. The whole, the whole lineup is really filled top to bottom. Um, when you're going up against a team, especially in the playoff rounds, especially as you get deeper into it, having that depth like they have at a high-end level is really going to be a big impact. For sure. And Jay, you want to get us started off with Berkeley Prep as well, a team we've talked about quite a few times. Yeah. Um, I only got to see them, you know, one time this season, but in the one game that I saw, I mean, there was a lot of things like, obviously, the the big name, which we'll probably talk about a little later on in the show, is Cade Curlin, who is the U University of Florida commit. Um, on the season, is hitting 486 with 10 home runs and 30 RBIs. An absolute force at the top of that lineup really is the center of everything that they're doing in Berkeley prep. Um, other guys that, you know, stand out just from the game that I saw and just overall in this season, Gunnett Carlson, the senior uh, hitting 414 with 22 RBIs. Owen Mikkelfatrick, he hit a home run in the game that I went to. He has four on the season, 29 RBIs, hitting 372. I mean, when you just look up and down this lineup, you got to have guys that are able to, you know, make an impact every game. And then when you, when you move over to the pitching side of things, you have Quinn, who's, who has a .88 ERA in 48 <sighs> innings pitched. Absolutely insane. Wow. Um, and it, to do that at any level, to be able to do what he's done, along with 66 strikeouts in, the, in those 48 innings pitched, um, really notable. I mean, obviously this team didn't, wasn't able to finish the undefeated season that they started, but it was still very, very impressive all throughout. And I expect them to be a, a tough out for whoever they end up facing as we continue to move on in these, in these playoffs. 
definitely looking forward to seeing more coverage of them as well. Another team that's looking to repeat as state champions is the First Academy. Got their first state championship as a program last year. One of the big names on the team is Isaac Sewell, who we'll talk a little bit more about later. But in addition to him, you can't forget about Jaden Bastine, the Jacksonville U commit, rangy outfielder, definitely a dangerous person to have on the bases as well. Uh, Greg Pate, who's just a hit and go guy, great for the top of the lineup. Um, ben Barrett as well, who we've seen do it both on the mound and at the plate as well, running his fastball up to the low 90s. We'll be talking about him as well, I'm sure. And yeah, just looking forward to seeing the team. Oh, another name I can't forget, Young Gun, Mr. Kyla Wynn. Another two-way that I'm sure we'll be looking at going forward as well. But definitely looking forward to seeing what this team can do. All right, and on to American Heritage. Yeah, so this is another team we've highlighted quite a few times before, and they finished the season 22-1. and one. So these guys know how to stack up the Ws as well. Uh, one of the first players, which we'll highlight later on, but has really made himself um, impactful from a two-way perspective is Eric Blair, the Florida commit. Um, so he's really kind of <laughs> chipped in both ways. And I think that's really one of the things we've seen, guys, is a lot of the teams that we expect to like go on big playoff runs have one of their guys on their team that can really get it done on both sides of the plate. So that's really key to being a part of it. Um, another guy we'll look at is Ray Bermudez, left-handed hitter made an impact um, when we saw him a couple weeks ago, really brings a lot to the table from a professional hitter perspective, knows how to take a good AB, can drive the ball gap to gap, also has power to put it straight over the center field wall as well. So there's a lot to like that he brings from the lineup to a offensive standpoint point of view. And then finally, Mateo Cerna, who switch hitting, uh, really kind of more physical DH for their team, but We've seen him from both sides of the plate this season. So what American Heritage brings to the table is their lineup is going to hit the ball. So, yeah, they're, they're going to be a tough out. You're really going to have to pitch well against them. And the record speaks for itself. For sure. And, Jet, another team in your neck of the woods, Calvary Christian Clearwater. And make sure you enunciate that one. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't had the privilege of seeing this t- this team in person from but just from what we've talked about on the show or just the coverage that we've had. Um, a few guys that you know stand out in this one: uh, Sean Shelley, who is a Barry commit, hitting 392 with 23 RBIs on the season. Uh, Matt Rose, another senior, hitting 380, 22 RBIs, and a USF commit. And then a guy that I'm pretty sure we've mentioned on the show a bunch of times: uh, Landon Maradis. Part of a very, very exceptional pitching staff for this team. Um, he is a North Carolina State commit, and I'm just looking at the um, the numbers on the pitching side of things for this team. Combined DRA for this whole team is a point five zero. Um, <laughs> you got every guy in this, every guy that's pitched at least one inning for this team has an ERA of point ninety one or below. Um, it's just very, very yeah. impressive. They say that obviously defense wins championships. And if, you know, I mean, Calvary Christian, they're 23, 24, and one, I think. And if they're able to continue to use this pitching and use it to their advantage, um, it's going to be very tough for any offense, even some of the best offenses in the state, to be able to compete with this kind of pitching staff. We might have to censor some of those numbers because that was just disgusting. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and rounding us out, Mike, St. John's Country Day. Yeah, another really talented team that um, has two or three guys that, wow, um, they're, they're really going to bring a lot to the table as these guys advance through the playoffs. They went up to the NHSI as well, had a really good showing, were in the final, lost to Stoneman Douglas, but, I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. Those guys went up there and beat some really tough teams. And, you know, what they bring to the table, especially starting with Bradley Hodges, is going to propel them through. And we're going to talk about him a little bit later on. But he's another one, guys, that gets it done both offensively and on the mound. And I think we're really starting to see that here, that this seems to be a pattern of some of these teams is having a a real solid prospect that can get it done and deliver in multiple ways for the team. Jordan Taylor, a Florida State commit has a rocket of an arm from the outfield, so he brings a lot to the table from a defensive standpoint. And 
he's another one that, yeah, he can deliver some extra base hits, but he can drive it over the wall too. So he's a big power threat. And then finally, one that maybe we haven't touched on as much, but Finn Howe for them. Now, we know that Bradley Hodges has been leading the way on the mound, but Finn actually in 30 innings pitch has a .91 ERA. So he's been able to complement Hodges really well. And I think all of us know here that if you have the arms to take you to the next round, it's really going to help you advance. Most definitely, man. And just a reminder real quick, this is a message to all 2023 to 2026 grads. This upcoming June 15th, we'll be having the Diamond Prospect Media Central Florida Showcase. It will feature a pro-style workout along with bullpens. This is a great way to get your videos and stats updated for the upcoming early part of the summer, in addition to having some additional exposure as well. All players will be outfitted in a beautiful DPM jersey shirt, and you'll be able to keep your shirt along with your video at no extra charges. Once you pay, everything is yours. So definitely looking forward to see the talent that we get out there. Make sure to sign up, guys. All right, and now we're going to be transitioning into a new segment, I guess we can call it. A new, yeah. Something to be proud of, I would say. Mike, do you want yes. to break down the Diamond Prospect Player of the Year Award a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this will be our inaugural, inaugural, I think I said that right mm-hmm. the second time, um, this season. And wow, guys, we really have some great nominees that we're going to go over here. But basically how we're going to work this out is we have – eight nominees and starting tomorrow around 10 a.m. we're going to be doing a fan vote so two groups of four and what we're going to be doing is we're going to let that run for 24 hours and then after 24 hours we're going to take the top two from each one to give us a final four on Wednesday around 6 p.m. we'll put up those final four do a 24-hour kind of cycle and see who comes out on top and that'll be one of the characteristics for the uh, player of the year award the second characteristics will come down to our staff. So you guys and a couple others that have been out and seeing games are going to look at the nominees and make your own pick. And then finally, yours truly, the scouting director, will make the third pick. So we'll have three different areas that we're going to pull from. And how it's going to go is as long as two out of the three aspects that I just mentioned match up, that'll be our player of the year. But if all three have a different pick, well, We'll let the people make the pick, and we'll make the final four van vote. Whoever wins that one wins the player of the year. So we want to make sure that everybody kind of makes an impact in choosing this, and we're going to need their help because we have some great nominees and some really impressive stuff from some of these guys. Oh, most definitely. Where well, it looks like we're about to get into some of the nominees right now. Uh, Jet, do you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, first off, I'm, I'm about to talk about Cade McDonald, but I want to really congratulate him on him committing to the University mm-hmm. of Central Florida. Um, an outstanding season this year, record breaking. Uh, when you look at the numbers, I'll get into it a little bit, but um, it's definitely well deserved and really excited to see um, how he progresses as he continues to finish his high school career and then advance to college. But yeah, so Cade McDonald, I actually had the pleasure of seeing him play for the first time this past week. And I was very excited to do so because, like I said, his numbers are off the page. 652 batting (laughs) average, 720 on base, 1.166 slugging, and that's with 41 (laughs) RBIs and eight home runs. And then on top of that, and I I just want to mention something, that to, to master one aspect of the game is extremely impressive, but then to do it, with another aspect of, game, of his game, that's just a whole nother story. On the mound, a 2.05 ERA with 61 Ks in 51 innings pitch. Um, Caden McDonald had a through on home run in this game that I went to against Wharton, and it was just an absolute <laughs> monster shot over a very, very high center field wall at Wharton High School, and he really has impressed all year, and it looks like every, every time he steps up to the plate, you're expecting him to get a hit because he's able to get a hit, whether it's to the opposite field, to the pole side, <laughs> up the middle. He's able to cover every aspect of the field to the T. Um, and then on the mound as well, um, despite a, a rough patch, you know, with offices could have had some more help from his defense, but really is able to use that high powered fastball along with really just some new buckling off speed that really is a full complimentary piece to his full arsenal loved what i saw from him in this game 
And I'm hoping he, you know, finishes off the season just how he started. It looks like it's going to be the case. And definitely, definitely someone to keep an eye on going forward. I just love the video game numbers that we're about to be just listing through like just regular. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> this is some crazy no. stuff. And speaking of video no. game numbers, Mike, you got the next man up. Oh, my goodness. Roman Anthony, huh? Well, uh, he's obviously one of our nominees and for good reason this season. I think he's been on our Twitter, our Instagram account. We've highlighted him here. Um, 512 batting average, 592 on base percentage, 950 slugging, and I mean, nine home runs on the year, 34 RBIs, delivering game winning hits. I mean, if there's a key cog in the wheel for the Stoneman Douglas team, it's Roman Anthony. And he's really performed in some in front of some big name people this season. And he's really elevated his MLB draft stock. So what else can you say about the guy? Everything, just whenever he steps up to the plate, <laughs> who knows what can happen. I couldn't have put it any better myself. Another man we alluded to earlier, Mr. Isaac Sewell out of the First Academy. I'm going to go out on a limb here. If we were doing this award last year, I really do think he would have been a top four finalist. He put together an amazing last year in route to them winning a state championship. This year, he's followed it yes. up with an 8-1 and one record, 1.41 ERA, and 70 Ks in just 54.2 innings pitched. Big, durable body that can log up a bunch of innings pitched. I don't know what else to say, man. I'm looking forward to what he can do in the playoffs as well, but just looking forward to seeing him on the mound in general. And Mike, you're going to go with another one here, another man who we alluded to earlier, Mr. Bradley Hodges. Well, this one might have a chance of, you know, really mirroring some of Mr. McDonald's uh, stats, as we mentioned earlier. And, well, let's talk about some video games number here. So we'll start with his offense. 481, 554 on base percentage, 911 slugging to go along with nine home runs and 25 plus RBI. Now, most of the time you would say, wow, what a great season. But guys... <laughs> He's had a better season on the mound. 8-0 and record with a .993 ERA and 101 strikeouts in 49.1 innings pitch. Out of that, he's faced 184 batters. So he's struck out 101 of the 184 batters he's faced. That's a little over two batters per inning. I mean, wow. So... What else can you say? If Bradley Hodges is on, I mean, look out for St. John's Country Day to just keep rolling. Most definitely. And Jet, you're going to take us into the next man, Mr. Cade Curlin. Yeah, I alluded to him a little bit earlier on in the show and an outstanding season from him as well. Hitting 486 with the 634 OBP and a 958 slugging, 30 RBIs and 10 home runs as well. Just a really really athletic force when it comes to taking the field whether it's at the plate or at shortstop where he is locked down any ball to his left any ball to his right in front of him behind him he's able to cover a ton of ground out there in the infield and then at the plate like i said that athletic frame to go along with very quick hands a compact swing along with plenty of power as you know evidence in his 10 home runs but obviously the university of florida commit a big part of Berkeley prep and the big part of them getting to where they want to go this season. For sure. And the next man going along with a the theme of men who can do it on the mound and also at the plate as well, <laughs> Mike, Mr. Eric Blair. Yep. We've mentioned him a couple of times before, and he's been a big part of American heritage with the outstanding record that they've had this season. So at the plate 422 batting average, 568 on base percentage and a 687 slugging. And while he only had four home runs, he had 32 RBIs to go along with it. So not only could he get it done from a power perspective, but when there was runners on base, he clearly drove them in when the opportunity was there. Also, on the mound, <laughs> a 6-0 record with a 2.26 ERA and 52 strikeouts and 31 innings pitched. So he's another one that, without a doubt, has helped propel American heritage, not to only where they're at right now, but... He's going to be called on here as they go up against some stiff competition in South Florida to hopefully make it to Fort Myers. 
And rounding us out, Jet, Wes Mendez. Yeah, Wes Mendez, the 2023 Vanderbilt commit, another two-way guy that we're talking about, obviously a common theme um, on this show, but at the plate, hitting 432 with a 511 OBP, along with four home runs, and then on the mound, a 7-1 and record with a 164 ERA with 70 Ks in 42 innings pitched. Um, absolutely, you know, remarkable numbers this season for him. And as far as, you know, the power numbers go, I think as he continues to fill out, because he has the frame to do so, already extremely athletic, I think we'll see more pop from him as he, you know, progresses into his senior season and then into college. But I never got the chance to see him pitch this season, but just from what I've seen, you know, Max, um, really high velo from that left side, and is really able to get the job done at the plate, on the mound, just an all-around player and a big part of the middle of the order for this um, Jesuit baseball team. Definitely some stiff, stiff competition here. Uh, I feel <laughs> bad for the fans, and I feel bad for us having to vote and trying to find a winner, but this is a great problem yeah. to have, in all honesty. <laughs> That's why we're bringing other people in, so that way we can blame everyone. Exactly. <laughs> All right, and this is just another friendly reminder to everybody that we are constantly updating our YouTube channels for the 2022 MLB Draft and 2023 MLB Draft. We'll be having prospects across the state in these YouTube videos, along with high school season coverage that will be updated far into the playoffs as well. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and follow for the next few videos. All right, Jet, as always, man, thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, Jet. All right, time for everybody's favorite part of the season. More MLB draft coverage, Mike. And we're going to be starting off with a man who we've been talking about for a while, alluded to his team earlier in American Heritage, Mr. Brandon Barrera. Yeah, so uh, Brandon, we were actually able to catch his final start of the season, obviously, as he prepares from an MLG, MLB draft perspective. A uh, lot of the same as we know from Brandon. Final outing, struck out 11 over six innings pitched. He's run his fastball up to 99 this season. When we saw him, he was 94, 98. Obviously, from the left side is just really high-end stuff. But what really separates him is his feel for his off-speed stuff. And I think that's one of the things that we've always kind of known about him is, yeah, he can run it up there from a fastball standpoint. But his curveball-slider combo, both of them, I mean, Kennedy running up into the 2,900 3,000 RPM range. So there's a lot of spin. We've seen a lot of his strikeouts that almost hits the back foot of a right-handed batter because of how much late movement it has after they swung and missed at it. So that's the kind of movement this kid gets on his pitches. Obviously, from a projection standpoint, he really um, – there's a lot of looseness in the arm, comes out of his hand very easy. The changeup is another weapon that he really uses. And – he has four pitches that he can throw for strikes and they're all at a really high end level. I expect him as the Vanderbilt committee is to be one of the higher end um, from a draft perspective coming up here. And, you know, he's has a chance to go really early on. So he's going to be someone that we're going to be keeping our eye on when that comes around. Most definitely. Next up is a man we've talked about in the past a little bit, but he's also the first game I did in coverage working for this company as well. <laughs> see this man blossom into the player that he is now, man. He's just scratching the surface. Mr. Elijah Green. Yes, and uh, I think you probably will recognize this phrase, um, Kennedy, is that Elijah Green is one of those players that, unless you're on an emergency like phone call or something, stop what you're doing and just, like, watch him. There's mm -hmm. you, it's, it's really special. I mean, he's a five-tool talent. There's no doubt about that. He every, every time he steps to the plate, whether he hits one over the fence or he hits a single, like he probably ends up on third because he's stolen second and third. And that's just the magnitude of it. He hits for average from the outfield, has a above average arm, and a lot of that speed translate as well. He'll go run a ball down in the gap that you just think that, wow, that's going to be a base hit, and all of a sudden he gets under it and it's an out for the pitcher. So there's really a lot to like there. He's been someone that every year seems to get better, and he was already one of the best in his class each year to begin. So he's just grown by leaps and bounds. 
His dad was actually a former tight end for the Steelers, first rounder out of Liberty University. So there's automatically some bloodlines there from an athletic standpoint. So expect Green to go fairly early. He's committed to Miami. Um, it'll come down to some different circumstances on whether he um, ends up going there or not. But expect to hear Green's name pretty early, probably in the first round. I remember in that game, I saw him take first. He steals second and third, follows it up in the third, and by doing the exact same thing. And I was like, okay, this is something different out here. Yes. Wait a minute. <laughs> different, different. That's the word. All right, Mike, and rounding us out is one of Elijah's teammates, Mr. Jackson Ferris. Yeah, quite a quite a group of players they have on there at that IMG Academy National team. And Jackson is right up there with Elijah as one of the ones that could go really early in this draft. And what else can you say? The, the, a big thing that is always going to be a draw for MLB draft prospects is a left-handed pitcher with projection. So there's a lot to like there. Up to 95, and Kennedy, he just straight up pounds the strike zone. He comes after you with that fastball early and often, has a really nasty 12-6 to curveball that he throws over for strikes. Feel for the changeup. But anytime you have a prep arm like that, that can run it up there. And let's face it, he's been going up against pretty good competition as soon as he's gotten over to IMG. So the old miscommit is a, a big time arm to watch. And like I said, probably someone that we're going to hear fairly soon when we're watching the draft. All right, and rounding us out, last segment of the day, good old Mike's likes. Starting us off is Mr. Rylan Lujo. Yeah, and um, by the way, all these next uh, three or four players we're going to talk about here are uncommitted. So if um, we don't have, if they should be ones that you know, if you haven't heard a ton about them yet, get them on your list, put them on your radar, mm -hmm. especially as we enter the first part of the summer. These are players you're going to want to look at. Rylan Lujo, really like him as a 2024 infielder. Physical physicality is present. He's got a lot of athleticism. And as we've seen a couple times this season, he can really drive the baseball. Um, and that's for extra base hits, whether it's deep to the center field wall, down the left field line, aggressive runner. There's obviously a lot more in there because he's a younger guy. So he's going to be one that if you haven't seen a ton of him yet, make sure to look out for him this summer because he's going to make an impact, especially offensively. And who knows, you might hear him his name down the line here for Stoneman Douglas. Most definitely. Next up, Mr. Nick Joya. Out of Lake Mary. Yeah, so Kennedy, I know you've um, seen him quite a bit, but I think the thing that's really stood out to me is that he really keeps all these base runners honest, and he's not afraid to throw the ball, whether it's a delayed steal, a back pick, or a regular kind of stolen base attempt. And to me, if you can do that behind the plate, and I'm sure you'll touch on offensively, that's really a lot to bring to the table. For sure. I think in every time, every, every outing we've seen him behind the plate, I think he's caught a man down, whether it be at second or third. Just a very heads-up, alert defender, but also some juice offensively as well. I remember yep. earlier in the game we covered when they took on Apopka, he homered over the left center wall for a solo shot. So as, we, as he continues to develop physically, he's already an alert defender as well. Sky's the limit. I'd love to see where he goes, man. And next man up, we got Mr. Jude Hildreth. Yeah, so he is on Inspiration Academy, and his uh, teammate we're going to talk about here in a minute. But Judd is a 2022 uh, uncommitted infielder, and he's really kind of one of those late bloomers, if you will, Kennedy. He's become much more physical over the past year, especially in the lower half. But I think the one thing that really stands out about him is, yeah, he makes the plays in his field. He has an above-average accurate arm across the diamond, but he just hits. He just gets hits all up and down the lineup wherever he's at, um, can take it to both sides of the field, gap-to-gap -gap guy, and he seems to have a little bit of a, an above-average IQ on the base pass. He'll take that extra base if you throw the ball in. He's not afraid to steal the bag. So I think he's going to be one that is going to be a really nice late pickup for a program and someone that plays a lot of has played a lot of games for inspiration and just flat out just hits the ball. For sure, and running us out is his teammate, Landon O'Donnell. Yeah, Landon. Um, he is a big, strong, athletic kid. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was able to see him down there, he put one 
directly over the center field wall um, for a solo home run. Really, his physicality really translates from an offensive standpoint as he's able to drive the ball with intent. And yeah, he can put it over the wall, but he's another one that, listen, he can drive a ball deep in that letter, left center field gap. You got runners on base. He's going to drive them in. The arm across the diamond is really um, above average as well. We've seen him on the mound before, actually, run it oh, up yeah. to 93, 94. And from what I understand, um, it sounds like he's going to be bringing that a little bit more back for the summer months. So, yeah, we like what he brings to the table from an offensive standpoint. But that arm is going to be interesting to watch, too. And look at that. We start off the episode talking about some dangerous two-way players. We end right back at it, and we're ending the episode with one as well. Look how things just come together, man. Unreal. <laughs> Definitely great having you on as always, man. And to everyone watching, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, Ken.